Good evening and salutations, my YNR fans. Let's start off with the Ice Princess and Nick. So, she's having doubts. You know, at first she... In the beginning, she starts acting... Well, she says that she is unsure about Ashlyn and everything that's going on. But then she starts acting all icy to Nick. And then after Nick is like, listen, at the end of the day, I'm on your side, regardless of... of whatever's going on, I'm not here to judge, I'm not, you know, I don't really have, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm just here for you, after he finally convinces her, um, and she realizes that the evidence is, oh, damn it, it's not good, and, you know, the thing is, it's one of those, she's afraid, she's afraid that if this is true, then what does it say about her? She can't even sit there and bring herself to admit that this is true, you know, that the evidence is, is like, true. Because she does, you know, she just can't go there with that possibility. So it seems like, you know, he's making headway. And hell, even she believes that Victor, you know, wouldn't just make up something like that. But of course, Ashton comes in, and whatever progress that Nick was making... Seemed like it just went right out the damn window. Um, Nick says a couple of things, gives his icy glare, and walks off. And, um, you know, Ashlyn is just sitting there looking at Victoria, which she looks like she's confused and hurt and just all sorts of emotions. And he looks at it, he's like, what's, what's, what's going on? And then she hugs him, I'm like, uh, wait, what? <laughs> What are you doing? I, I literally sat there and was like, this man literally just sat there and tried to convince you for a good 20 minutes that there's a real possibility that this guy is lying to you about everything. And you even admit that the evidence that they have doesn't look good. And yet you hug him because why? Did I miss something? Meanwhile, Adam, being the last to know that Ashlyn is, you know, co-CEO, she's like, yo, are you, are you serious? Now, his plan, you know, his plan is to get the media involved. Because he's like, yo, listen, after he blames Victoria for all of this mess, all of it, and of course, Victor tries to be like, hey, listen, you know, we all made mistakes and, you know, it's just not really a good idea to play, you know, to play the, um, the blame game. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It's a perfectly good idea to play the blame game, especially when she's to blame for this. So what do you. But, you know, he's trying to, you know, I guess be like a peace mediator and, you know, not have everything come down on her, which. I have no problems in it there, you know. I mean, to be fair, to be fair, Victor did sit down back then, so it's, it's not majority on her. Um, but yeah, you know, Adam, Adam plan is to try to press. Because he's like, yo, listen, we got to sit there and be prepared for if she knows the truth and she still stands by him. Like, we got we to have a backup plan for the backup plan because Nick may not be our best option. I mean, he may not sit there and get through to her. And so he's like, I want to sit there and, you know, leak this stuff to the press. And let the dust settle, you know, let the dust just fall out where it may, whatever. But Victor's like, yeah, that is like a terrible idea because one, is going to humiliate um, Victoria. It's going to look bad on a company. And um, yeah, that's just not a good idea. But Adam's like, listen, yeah, we, we may sit there and get some blowback, but we can start to repair the damage once we kick him up on out of here. But Victor's like, well, we're not going to do it. Our best plan is Nick. The best plan is the guy who got ejected from the wedding for trying to help the first time. Great Victor Newman. It's not very stories. And um, the, the problem with that is that is what's going on now. And I get it. You know, listen, every every 
every character suffered his wins and his losses. And um, this just may be one of those times where, you know, he's not, um, you know, he's, he's taking it out. Now, of course, I've heard from people, not just my comment section, but just in general that, you know, he's going to find a way to come back because he's Victor Newman. I'm like, all right, I'm waiting. I got my damn black chair right here. I'm waiting. When, when is that going to happen? I mean, seeing how this show kind of moves at a snail's pace. I guess we're looking at six to eight months. Maybe, give or take. Um, of course, Sally overhears a lot of the stuff that's going on as far as um, <clears throat> Michael being missing and everything like that. Now, granted, you, you got the other side of, um, I think her name is Judy. I think that's her name. Chloe and Chelsea Smith, they're talking business, but, you know, she can't focus on that because she is busy thinking about her husband. So, Chloe and Chelsea do a good job as far as calming her down by Snitch is saying that he's resourceful and, you know, there's not a challenge that he can't sit there and meet. Like, he's going to be fine. If, if he's in trouble, he's going to get himself out of this. Um, and, of course, you know, Judy, I think that's her name, um, filed a missing police report. And she was like, All right, you know, listen, I'm, I'm just going to sit there and go down there. Now, part of me was like, okay, why don't you do that? I mean, it's not like you don't have the money or the resources to sit there and go down there. Um, but of course, you know, Chloe and Chelsea's like, all right, you can go down there, but then what? Well, what are you going to do then? I mean, yeah, she has the resources. I mean, and granted, this is what I was thinking about from both sides. Like, yeah, she has to sit there. She has the resources and everything like that. But if Michael got captured or whatever by these people, then what do you think you're going to do? So... They kind of convinced her that's a bad idea. They calm her down. And Sally comes in there and just kind of, in some ways, kind of make matters worse. Because they did a good job of calming her down. And then Sally comes in and is like, well, I couldn't help over here. It's like, no, you chose to sit there and listen for a good 30 seconds before you accidentally overheard. So she comes in there and she's like, hey, listen, you know, Victor is doing everything he can to get Michael back. And, you know, he sent his best people. And so now she's like, all right, I mean, that's that's a good thing. But now that just told me that, that just showed me that Victor was sent there lying to me that Michael isn't okay. And um, he doesn't really have the situation handled like he claimed he did. So, um, yeah. So she leaves. And, of course, Chloe and Chelsea just look at her like, sweetheart, we, we just literally sat there and tried to calm it down for like 20 minutes. And you just... You just undid that in like 30 seconds. That's, that's awesome. But I think one, I think one of them was simply saying like it was probably a good idea so this way she can know the truth and whatever. Um, now Sally does, you know, try to extend the olive branch by Smith saying, Hey, listen, we're not working together. Um, I hope that we can just at least be cool or civil. And Chelsea's like, we're never going to be best friends, but you know, we can be. You know, we can be acquaintances. We can be we can be civil to each other. So it's a start. Um, Sally also was talking to Sharon about the best way to sit there and, and help Adam and deal with Victor. Because, you know, with Victor, you know, Adam is always sitting there, from what I can tell, um, always seeking approval for Adam. And, you know, Sally's like, listen, when the, when the dust settles and everything like that, you know, Adam's going to be so worried and focused on Victor, you know, pleasing Victor that he's not going to sit there and worry about himself. So it, it was kind of a meaningful conversation as far as like, you know, diving more into Adam and Sally, if you're into that stuff, I kind of found it a little bit somewhat boring and like, all right, I guess you had to sit there and find a reason to show Sharon. So, Okay. Also, apparently there's probably some tension because when Sally was like, you know, I want your perspective on, you know, how to deal with Adam and stuff like that. You can tell that Sharon was like, oh, okay. All right. This is, um, was not part of my plans for today, but you know, whatever. Fine. Um, damn, how many enemies did Sally make when she came to town? I mean, I know she had a hell of a lot of enemies when she left. I remember her kidnapping Flo. Just to sit there and be with Wyatt. Because. 
Well, I made a whole video about it called Please Don't Be a Sally. Of course, I had to sit there and erase that video because I got, you know, a copyright strike for simply talking about being big. It was a nice little poem. Guess it was a poem. But it was one of those things, it's like I couldn't sit there and repeat it because it just came out. It came out in a time where I was just so annoyed with her character that <laughs> I guess I kind of made it a PSA for women to not be a Sally. Mm. Good times. Now, Nate is sitting there talking to Ash, and he's like, hey, listen, I got to sit there and tell him everything I know. I got to tell the Newmans. I got to tell Victor everything I know. I can't sit there and just keep this to myself. And Ash was like, all right, well, what are you going to sit there and tell him? What proof do you have? I mean, yeah, he, it, I guess the best way I could sit there and kind of describe this. And it reminds me of something off of the boondocks. Where it's like the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence or something along those lines. It's, it's like they're saying, well, we don't have any proof that that you didn't have cancer. You know, we, the x-rays don't show it. The reports don't sit there and show that you went in chemo. There's no proof of that. There's an absence of evidence. It's not saying that you did do it. But asking, it's not they're trying to make the argument of, yeah, you don't have any proof that I wasn't there doesn't mean that I wasn't there and it doesn't mean that I still don't have it just because you can't see it. So he's not there trying to make that argument. He's not there trying to convince Ashland, I mean, um, Nate. And then, you know, then <laughs> he makes this not even a veiled threat. He just pretty much just makes a threat like, listen, if you do that, um, I don't exactly remember the wording that he said, but he pretty much kind of made the argument like, yo, I don't think it's going to be in your best interest to do that. I mean, on top of that, he is violating so many HIPAA laws. That it's like, bro, once this stuff comes out public, you won't have to worry about not, you know, like leaving the medical field because you won't have a job. <laughs> on top of that, you may actually face criminal charges. So, I mean, there's there's that. Um, but, you know, Nate looks at him like, Yo, are you threatening me? It's like, no, I'm not threatening you. I'm just not just saying, like, you know, you don't really have anything. And it's just be, you know, kind of a terrible thing to, you know, come at Victoria, all this stuff, and break her heart. And, you know, and then you're wrong. And then you hurt her. Ashland, the manipulator. I like it. But he's like, yeah, listen, I'm going to do what I got to do. And Nate is like, all right, this conversation. I mean, um, and Ashland's like, this conversation is over. And he walks off. And I kind of look at it from, you know, I, I, I look at it from Nate's point of view, even when he's in the town of Lena, you can just tell. He's, his thing, he's mad at himself not seeing the signs. He's mad as far as being played. You know, having him just randomly be his best friend, you know, um, as far as like asking him to be his, his, his best man at, at a wedding and just this instant friendship. He feels like he, should have known better. You know, he felt naive about the whole situation. And I guess the part that kind of sucks is that, you know, having a conversation with him and saying that he doesn't have evidence, he's like, I don't get any joy out of this. It... Because here's the thing. What if he's wrong? Like, yeah, okay, he has all of the evidence, you know, the paperwork, the, the paper trail, and the medical history, well, the lack of medical history of his cancer. But what if he's telling the truth? You know, it's something that Adam said, which um, I would find it really interesting if the writers actually just put it in this, put it in the story, that Adam was like, how do we, how do we know that, you know, you didn't concoct this whole thing to get back control of, you know, the company. And I sat there and I thought about it. And I was like, well, what if he did? I mean, yeah, I understand that most likely there's 99% chance that he didn't do it. I'm just not saying that 1% chance. What if he did? What if he, what if he masterminded this whole thing? You know, got the doctors to sit there and tell this lie. Got the cop, they got the doctors to sit there and fabricate this medical stuff, you know, medical history of him. Just to get back the company, just to get back control of the company. Can you imagine that? 
you imagine how Nate would sit there and feel? That he accused him of not having cancer. And then he did. That would be absolutely devastating. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I would feel horrible if I did that. So you can just tell the look on, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can just sit there and tell the look on his face where it's like, you know, he's he's saying all this stuff, and he's telling him, like, yo, listen, I got to sit there and tell him, like, you know, just come clean. I know there might have been maybe a 1% chance, like, that he felt bad about it. Like, what if, he, what if he's telling the truth? I don't know. I'm just saying, I like to sit there and throw out little theories like that every now and then because, I mean... Now, the writers can sit there and do anything at this point. Well, nearly anything. I heard they actually had a supernatural entity at one point. Like, they made somebody disappear or somebody be a psychic at some point. I don't know what the hell that was about. But, um, that's just what I heard. I don't know if that's true or not. And yeah, he does want to tell him, um, Elena that. And, you know, about the whole Ashland thing. And, you know, Elena is, you know, she's not going to let him feel guilty or bad for being trusting and, and just for caring and stuff like that. He's not, she's not going to sit there and let him blame himself. Um, I don't know if I'm actually, <laughs> let me just double check my notes. And later on in the episode, Nick does talk to Sharon about Victoria and everything like that and about how much progress he was making and through Ashton came in and just kind of spoiled all the fun. Um, I think that's about it for the most part. I, I did actually enjoy this episode. I did. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this episode. This show, I'm still trying to figure this show out, to be honest. I know I've been watching for like three weeks. There is some interesting stuff within the show, and then there's just stuff where it's like, like the whole Jack stuff and Allie and just this whole, you know, chemo thing, which I've talked about yesterday, and I'm not going to really get into it. But you know, my, my point is this, I mean, granted, with every show, with every person, you know, you're always going to find stuff that's really interesting and stuff that's like, eh, I can kind of do it out, so... But, again, I did find this episode pretty interesting. So, um, yeah. With that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video.